Hello and welcome to the Visiting Nurses Association and Hospice of the Southwest Region's 2021 Virtual Tree of Remembrance service. During this evening, there will be a time where we'll talk about grief, hear from Dr. Eisman, and hear from a guest that has recently experienced loss firsthand. We'll say the names of those who are on, the, on VNA and hospice's services out loud to bring about recognition, closure, and comfort. There is a quote by Jose Harris that says, Tears shed for another person are not a sign of weakness. They are a sign of a pure heart. Or, as Winnie the Pooh would say it, how lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard? Grief is something that should be normalized, but unfortunately, it isn't. There are a few facts to understand in regards to grief. Number one, it is okay not to be okay for a season. Laura Ding Edwards has written a great poem that states, If the mountain seems too big today, then climb a hill instead. If the morning brings you sadness, it's okay to stay in bed. If the day ahead weighs heavy and your plans feel like a curse, there's no shame in rearranging. Don't make yourself feel worse. If a shower stings like needles and a bath feels like you'll drown. If you haven't washed your hair for days, don't throw away your crown. A day is not a lifetime. A rest is not defeat. Don't think of it as a failure, just a quiet, kind retreat. It's okay to take a moment from an anxious, fractured mind. The world will not stop turning while you get realigned. The mountain will still be there when you want to try again. So climb it in your own time and love yourself till then. Number two, there is no timeline on grief. Grief is something that is very peculiar and everyone is hardwired differently, which means that you run your race at your own speed. And then three, grief is not a neat process. While I'm positive what I just said is not new to you, this time of year can be difficult and overbearing to some. So those three facts should be something that you preach to yourself daily. I encourage each and every one of you to allow yourself to feel all of the emotions to walk through this grief with the understanding that there will be pain, emotions, hard days, harder days, but through that hard work, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We may wake up and just try to survive, but there will be a day when you wake up to try to live wholeheartedly if you work through your grief. At this time, We'll hear from Dr. Eisman. Thank you for attending this year's virtual hospice memorial service. I am Alan Eisman, our hospice medical director. On behalf of all of us, let us together thank our entire hospice team, nurse practitioners, nurses, nurses aides, social workers, spiritual coordinators, bereavement counselors, volunteers, and especially all of those who work in our hospice office. We couldn't do it without them. I want to recognize and thank our senior leadership executive team, our CEO, Sarah King, and our chief of clinical operations, Nicole Moran, have overseen the very successful expansion of hospice services, which are now provided throughout Rutland and Bennington counties. Stacy Oxley is responsible for supervising and directing hands-on day-to-day operations. Stacy's energy and motivation are a continual inspiration to all of us. I want to give special recognition to our hospice nurses who work tirelessly on a truly 24-7 schedule. They support our patients, families, and their caregivers, treating each and every one of them with respect and dignity. They make our patients and their families feel like they are a member of an extended family, not just a client receiving a scheduled service. Although we have not been able to provide volunteer services or in-person Trillium Singers since the COVID pandemic began, 
We look forward to a time when we will again utilize these essential and vibrant community members who have always given so much of their love and time to us all. Hospice and palliative care are well-recognized services in the United States, Canada, the British Isle, most of Europe, Australia, and New Zealand, as well as several other countries. And global recognition beyond these countries has been increasing over the past 15 years. But access to hospice and palliative care services throughout much of the world is limited and unequal. Most hospice and palliative care services are offered in high-income countries. However, the greatest unmet need is in low-income countries. High-income countries usually have a greater integration of hospice and palliative care services as part of their general health care systems. In addition, many high-income countries provide near-universal access to pediatric hospice and palliative care. Low-income countries often have no hospice and palliative care services, or they are only partially established. Many low-income countries rely on non-governmental organizations and volunteer community health workers to provide some hospice and palliative care services. The vast majority of children in need of hospice and palliative care services live in low- and middle-income countries. Globally, the greatest need for hospice and palliative care is related to cardiovascular disease and cancer. One exception to this is in Africa, where people with HIV AIDS are the largest group of patients in need of hospice and palliative care. Several issues affect the delivery of hospice and palliative care internationally. For example, views on death and the end of life differ across cultures and countries, which may serve as a barrier. Access to pain medications is unequally distributed with the majority of the world's population having inadequate access. Most low and middle income countries lack adequate hospice and palliative care training programs for healthcare professionals. There is considerable variation in the legal status of advanced directives and other end of life practices. And of course, lack of government funding is the most obvious barrier to the availability of hospice and palliative care services in many countries, especially those with low income. So we in the United States are very fortunate to have hospice and palliative care services available to us, but still we would like to see existing services expanded given the many benefits that hospice and palliative care can provide. I want to repeat something I talked about last year. Hospice is many things, but especially it is about dignity and time. By definition, hospice patients have limited time, and often because of this, the quality of each day, each interaction, can take on special importance. In the hospice realm, we acknowledge that an event, an anniversary, a holiday, a graduation, a wedding, or a birth might be the last one experienced of its type. And so we on the hospice team do our best to understand the big and small moments, working our hardest to enhance the quality of every day. We recognize our patients today by saying their names. Here in this hospice memorial service, we say the names of those who have died during this year and in years past. We say their names out loud, clearly, distinctly, and individually. What better way to recall their importance and our memory of each of these individuals? Maybe they had a nickname or a special way a friend or family member referred to them. By saying a name, we recognize each person in this simple and dignified style of remembrance, each one an individual with a life, a story, contributions, and a name. I hope the memory of every loved one lost during this year and any loved one remembered at this time will be a blessing to you and your family. For all of us, I hope for a safe and healthy holiday season. Let's stay careful, remembering to protect ourselves and each other. Together, we will get through this. Thank you, Dr. Eisman, for your gracious words. And now we're going to hear from someone who has experienced loss firsthand. It actually happens to be my brother, Joshua Terenzini. We lost our stepfather uh, a few months back, and through that process, um, we were able to experience hospice's love, devotion, and care firsthand. Hello, and happy holidays. 
My name is Joshua Terenzini, and it's a privilege to offer my family's experience with the VNA and hospice of the Southwest region. 2021 has proven to be an extremely difficult year for so many throughout the Rutland region due to the loss of loved ones, and our family was no exception. On March 31st, 2021, my stepfather of 29 years, Kevin Wolfenden, passed away after battling kidney disease and other chronic health issues for many years. Our family was with Kevin every step of the way through his diagnosis, weekly treatments, surgeries, and then finally, the brief time he spent on hospice. If it wasn't for the incredible care from the nursing team at the VNA and hospice, this experience would have been even more difficult. Some of you watching this recording today had the privilege of knowing Kevin, and to those who did not know him, I think you would have really liked him. He was the kind of guy that was the life of the party. He was someone who would offer a helping hand to anyone in need. And it is fitting that we are talking about him during the Christmas season, as this was by far his favorite holiday and time of year. As Kevin's medical power of attorney, the decision to stop treatment as Kevin slipped away was one of the toughest decisions of my life. I constantly found myself questioning this decision after it was made. I asked myself questions like, did we give up on Kevin too quickly? Should I have sought medical opinions elsewhere? Was there any hope for a miracle? And each time I asked these questions to the team at v and Hospice, they put my mind to ease that my decision was made based off of sound medical advice and I should allow myself to be at peace with the difficult decision that we made. Kevin's last week was largely spent in an unconscious state. As a family, we never left his side and when we did need a brief break from reality, the hospice team, along with the wonderful staff at the Genesis Mountain View Center, were there to relieve us. Our main concern turned from trying to save Kevin's life to making sure that he was comfortable as possible. He could no longer verbalize to us if there was any pain or discomfort, so we needed to rely heavily on the expertise of the nursing staff. His comfort in the final hours was our priority, and I am fully confident that the wonderful team of caring and compassionate nurses made sure that he was resting as peacefully as possible. Watching a loved one decline before your own eyes proved to be an unsettling and difficult experience for us. The nursing team from the VNA explained to us what signs to look for, noises to listen to, and prepared us to the best of their abilities as to what may or may not happen. There was a thorough explanation of what comfort was being provided and it gave us great confidence to know step by step what was taking place. When Kevin took in his last breath, my brothers and I were present to experience this final earthly goodbye. As it was confirmed that Kevin had departed us, the hospice team flipped a switch, going from medical professionals to grief counselors in an instant. Their concern for Kevin shifted to our well-being. It was incredible to see that this team of loving professionals could show us so much compassion, patience, and love. Losing a loved one isn't something that comes natural to us. There are so many unanswered questions, days of doubt, feelings of hopelessness, and more. We never felt like we were going through this experience alone. We always had the answers we were looking for, a shoulder to cry on, and someone to lift up our spirits. As a family, we often reflect back on the experience of losing Kevin. One of the greatest decisions that we made was to get Kevin's doctor to give us a referral to the VNA and hospice. No family should have to tackle this alone. Having the expertise of this truly professional team was the right decision for all of us. Our family wants to offer a special thank you to the nurses that directly made an impact on Kevin's final care and our lives forever. To Rich, Karina, Bob, and Don, thank you. Without the four of you, this difficult voyage would have been nearly impossible to navigate through. From our family to yours, happy holidays to everyone watching. Remember to give your loved ones a hug this holiday season. Family, love, and relationships 
are what matters the most. Goodbye. Thanks, Josh, for sharing your thoughts and feelings and even your journey through the difficult times of your own grief. If you're watching at home, please feel free to light a candle in honor of the loved ones that you may be missing right now. Catherine Fish. Harold White. Teresa Forkey. Peter Milnes. Doris Turco. Richard Haynes, Bruce E. Wilder, John Clare, James Briggs, Lynn Washburn, Bill Gould, Irene Forrest, Bernard Benoit, Fernand Benoit, Annette Rayum. Kathy Romano, Francis Mickey Kelly, Fred New, Glenn Warren, Joseph Spakowski. Sam Katrupi, Ann Katrupi, Patty Reed, Hannah Ackley, Mal Awater. Dennis Brownlee, Joel W. Williams, William G. Williams, Kevin J. Williams. Melissa W. Downs. Fred Manning. Eleanor McKinnell. Mary Patricia Manning. Morris Wade. Phyllis Chaffee Reed, Kimmy Reed, Agnes Reed, Raymond Reed Jr., Thomas M. Dowling. Edna Sarno. Mrs. Lucille Dupont. Mrs. Jean Smith. 
Mr. Gerald Smith. Louise Keen. Gertrude Haldeman. Frank Haldeman. Ethel Nichols. James Desorda. Curly Henry Disorda Jr. Pascal Mandela. Jean Rogers. Lindsay M. Lane. Judy. Jeriak Robert Dowhan Zachary Bemis Jordan Price Bemis Kristen Knott Lori Hickey Peter Carrera Kevin Daly Karen Dido Kevin Wolfenden Alice Pettit Robin Turner This tree is a great symbol of your own grief. As you hold that person close to you this holiday season, you may not have a spark, a light, or a glow in your life. My hope and prayer for you is that through your understanding of grief, the work you put in, and the ingredient of time, that the glow and spark of life would reappear. Well, thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope that you have found this program to be helpful and beneficial through your own time of grief. If you find yourself in the next year, two years, three years, in a place of mourning and grief that's unbearable, and you could use a hand, feel free to reach out to myself at VNA and Hospice of the Southwest region. Thanks so much.